I think everyone connects with art in a different way. For me personally, it is both the place I go to to seek solace and the place that I go to to maintain um, a good state of being, to, to maintain an even keel, so to speak. Welcome to Resilient Creatives, a podcast that explores the role of creativity in our society. My name is Chantal Solomon. I am a mixed race artist and community herbalist. Through my practice, I explore remediating the connection between people and the natural world. This season, I am talking with artists about their creative practice and the hurdles and triumphs along their journey. My name is Simone Littledale Escobar. I am a Canadian of Colombian and other assorted descent living on unceded Lekwungen and Wasanich territory, also known as Victoria, BC. My art practice at the moment uh, focuses both on my identity as first generation Canadian on one side, as well as questions of mental health, women's work, and more recently, how I am reacting to resource extraction that is happening in our province and around the world. I am a full-time middle school teacher, and while that takes up a lot of time and effort and passion, I always try and make time for art. My practice um, originally sort of centered around my heritage as an adult, and that was partially spurred by various trips I took to Colombia to visit my family. Uh, traveling back and forth and spending time there immersed in my culture and immersed in the artistic traditions of that country that I always felt I had an affinity to was really, it was it was the spark that set off a, a lot of exploration into those topics. It's not something I've been working on as regularly, but I mean, there's always an undercurrent. There's There's always a little bit of that cultural context that underlays my work. And I think, though it may not be obvious, there's, it's, it's always there. It's always with me. There was a point in my, in my career where I was making art commercially under the name Ghost Mountain Co. Uh, I still am. I, I make commercial pottery for, you know, sort of uh, more utilitarian purposes where people can, you know, use mugs and plates and things every day and they're dishwasher safe and all of that. It's great to hear that you've been able to continue to develop your art practice while devoting yourself to teaching. It sounds like you've explored a few different topics and mediums, and I'm curious, what are you working on these days? Lately, my focus, especially after um, uh, several months of pandemic, has really been pulled in another direction. Uh, not to say I won't keep making under Ghost Mountain Co. because, you know, I enjoy it as well. But not having access to uh, a proper studio as well as feeling the need to parse this general low-level hum of anxiety that has been a constant for the past 16 months um, has has moved me more towards doing things that are a little, you know, crazy, a little alchemical uh, and and out of the box to the resource extraction question, the politics and the ethics, and my own personal feelings around that. And I guess that began, it began a little bit before where um, I, you know, getting more into hiking and, and, and bird watching, I found myself in clear cuts a fair amount, especially, and they just, they, they completely took the words out of my mouth, witnessing that kind of devastation, that kind of, of waste. And I found myself feeling really angry and having a lot of resentment and a lot of really strong feelings around seeing forests cut down and the ground ripped open for mines uh, and, and, you know, other extractive industries. And of course, you know, we have the, uh, the questions of, of pipelines and energy uses living on Vancouver Island where where logging is such a major component of our economy I felt like I needed to speak to that so I've been going up into the 
clear cuts and collecting material, you know, with, with, with great effort, dig out and forage myself, um, both clay for pottery and, and earth pigments from those road cuts and that disturbed landscape, um, as well as material for actually firing the pottery. That's really awesome. I know topics around resource extraction can be so polarizing and is so charged with emotion. And I'm someone who's definitely in the same boat as you. I'm really sensitive to witnessing and hearing about these types of things, you know, being close to the land myself. But I also think it's really interesting that you are taking this topic and exploring it in this way. I've dabbled a little bit in making pigments and dyes, and it's quite the process. What's the story behind what got you immersed in this medium? I had been experimenting formerly with making watercolor paints out of earth pigments. I had all this dirt floating around in my house in little jars that I had collected from various places, hoping to eventually do something with them. And I, I took a class with Caitlin French into, into how to convert those into watercolors. And since then, I, I haven't looked at any other paint media. I haven't, I haven't touched acrylic paint since because it's so different. And it felt like so right in terms of the kind of art that I wanted to make. Most of the pigments I have collected uh, are from BC, though I do have a few from other places such as Utah and some that my friends have been so kind uh, to gather me in places like Greece and Oregon and, and other, other spots abroad. Um, I hope to take more trips to Colombia in the future uh, in order to gather earth materials and perhaps comment on, on some of the, the extraction that's going on there. Um, you know, there's uh, Canadian companies in particular have a really hideous track record of human rights abuse and uh and exploitation um in south america so it's a it's a question that i want to get to but have been uh, more focused on the local at the moment i actually did a residency in tassis uh the past two years which is on the north island a, a sculptor lives uh and and offers residencies in a uh, a former cut block and that you know being there and also seeing the effect of logging in that whole area um, has really sort of shifted my practice from one of internal investigation to one of external. Um, I feel that working with natural materials is something that I, I have a natural affinity for it. It feels a lot more normal to me than working with something that is, you know, plastic or petrochemical based as you know as hippy dippy as that sounds it it just feels a little bit more right for the messages that I'm trying to convey and for how the materials work I I tend to like things that are a little difficult a little temperamental being a person who loves to do things the hard way natural materials uh, and especially wild clay the not knowing whether it's gonna you know, melt into a puddle or look awful or come out this terrible muddy brown color is is really exciting and really fascinating to me. And it, it feels right. It feels a lot more right than to me than than going to the, the shops and, and just buying the medium in whatever particular color you want it to be. It, it, it always defies your expectation. It never quite does what you want it to do. It is the intersection of both how I want to engage with these questions of resource extraction and how I want to engage with my other love, which is science. I, you know, I don't have a, an actual background in science, but it is one of my passions. It's, I, you know, as I said, I'm a bird watcher. I also am dabbling in, in amateur geology. Uh, I'm fascinated by human sense of place is so often connected with those those uh, scientific components that we take for granted. And the way that things have evolved and, and grown in our particular ecosystems, and especially here in the ecosystem of the coast, to fit these perfect niches has been one of the, the driving forces behind, um, behind my more recent practice. It has been a real source of solace for me to 
you know, throw myself into working with these with these materials and uh, exploring these these wild clays and their personalities and ask those questions of myself and examine, you know, my my own emotions and, and how I want to convey that. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I really, I really hear you on this topic. And what it's bringing to mind is how like the average person I think is more familiar with the experience of being transformed by other people's art, whether that that's music or a film that really moves them and can, you know, bring up um, emotional reactions, right, and release the act of having a creative practice and bringing these big emotions, whether or not they be from our own experiences or things that we see in the community, when we bring these to our our practice and we work through something um, creatively, that it actually transforms what we're feeling and how we even perceive things sometimes. And I just think it's so beautiful that you're taking this this community issue you know it's it's this big thing that there's so many thoughts and feelings around it and really working with it on a personal level I've struggled to find a way to constructively express how I'm feeling because I was holding on to a lot of and and you know still am to an extent holding on to a lot of anger and a lot of sadness and a lot of sort of disgust around that that I don't think is necessarily productive to just hold on to. So art has been a really important way for me to figure out how to parse that and uh, has sort of also forced me to examine my own feelings around it, examine my feelings around both the, the politics and the ethics of taking more than we need from the natural world. Yeah, unfortunately, I think you're voicing a really common feeling. You know, I think that we're in this really unique time in history where we have the knowledge and we've seen the effects of not properly managing the land. And we have to process that because we are naturally connected with with it, with our environment. I know for myself as well, art has been a way to process or at least start conversation about these kinds of topics. I think it's really honorable and important to follow the threads from the places where we have strong emotions and see where that leads within our creative practice. I did a show a few years ago that was inspired by my lifelong fear of predatory animals here on Vancouver Island. I kind of grew up with this cougars and bears, oh my, fear in the pit of my stomach. And even though I had grown up going in the woods and foraging for a long time, I was always looking over my shoulder. And then naturally, you know, the longer time you spend in the woods, you start to meet the different inhabitants. And, you know, I started meeting bears quite regularly, and it was a peaceful and often fun experience. And then The most powerful moment was when I met a cougar. When I came face to face with this magnificent creature, I had no fear. I was completely peaceful and I was in awe of its grand presence. And I just wanted to honor that because it was a powerful thing for me to face that fear. And on the other side of that fear was this sense of personal power and strength that I was able to keep walking in the woods for years and years, you know, with the fear that I might bump into this creature and then finally doing it and it being okay, being okay to face my fear. And I did a show that was highlighting these creatures through painting their auras and just trying to uh, bring out their innocence and show that they are, you know, just these beautiful, beautiful creatures. But a really interesting thing happened when I went to view the show on my own during opening hours. I stumbled upon people who were having organic conversations that were inspired by viewing my work. And hearing those conversations as the fly on the wall really brought a new perspective to myself as an artist and Even being able to really call myself an artist and really own that title and understand what that meant for myself 
was that it wasn't about me. It wasn't about the perfection of, of how I drew these, these animals or whether or not I got the proportions correct and all of that. For me, the powerful thing was the reaction to it and the conversations that were being inspired from it and realizing that those conversations may not have happened otherwise. From that experience, I kind of started to step out of my own way and start to make art and just from that place of passion and not worry about um, meaning or precision in these in these types of things that were kind of boggling my mind before. It was it was this emotional process and this mending for me on a very deep level, and I'm really grateful for that experience. And it sounds like through your work that you're doing a lot of similar type of work, and that's why I share this story. For yourself, when did you realize that being creative was something that could support your emotional process? So I began making art at a very young age and from a young age realized that it was really important to how I felt and how I was doing. Um, I guess you could call that um, integral to my mental health. Being a person who uh, at, at a young age was diagnosed with depression um, I found that in order to to sort of maintain my mental health, uh, art was was central to that. Um, among you know, among other things, uh, there is no there is no one um, panacea for for mental health uh, and especially depression. For everyone, it is very complicated. But for me personally, I found that that art was sometimes the the only thing I had the energy to do. So it has been an, a tremendous help to me and a tremendous source of joy to me through my, my entire life uh, from, from youth to, to now as a, as a near 30-year-old. That early diagnosis was kind of a gift in a way because it has given me a lot of time to learn how to handle it and learn how to maintain it and live with it and sort of uh, approach it with, with care and compassion and a big part of that is is art practice, is to make time and carve out time to make art at least a couple of times a week just to to keep that practice going. I appreciate you sharing that, and I'm glad that you were able to find an outlet at a young age to help support your mental health. I can hear your compassion for yourself as you speak and your love of your art practice. For me, going through difficult times it has been often the one thing that has kept me going and the one thing that has kept me motivated to do anything. I think everyone connects with art in a different way. For me personally, it is both the place I go to to seek solace and the place that I go to to maintain, um, you know, a good a good state of being, to, to maintain an even keel, so to speak. Uh, just like, you know, exercising my body, I, I want to exercise that artistic muscle as well. I feel that need to do it. Thank you for sharing. I think it's really important to hear uplifting stories like yours. It sounds like you've had some really hard times, but you've also found an outlet that's brought you a lot of joy and passion. I think it's so important for people to hear about how different tools can support them with their mental health. It was a delight to talk with you today and hear the passion that you discovered through your curiosity of natural pigments and your work with clay. And I hope that your journey continues to inspire you. 